So what is the core idea of the adapter? We want to wrap around the class to make it compatible to another interface. So the problem is that we have two interfaces which are not fitting together. And we somehow um, want to make them fit. And for that, the adapter is a good idea. So as you can see, um, we have an adapt which is our original class, which is the class we cannot change, for example, or which we want to use, but which has the wrong interface. And that's why we uh, create an adapter around it, which wraps the original adaptee and makes a different interface out of it. So for example, the adaptee has this specific request method, but actually we want to have a request method. And the adapter just wraps this around. And our client, in this case, uses uh, just uses the interface. Think of the um, dependency inversion. We just use the target interface we want to use, and the adapter just implements this interface. So the client doesn't care um, um, which actual object implements this in the background. It just sees the interface. So the adapter, what is the adapter? We have to work with multiple different frameworks or libraries. Um, so these may be in different version, these may, they may come from different companies and so on. The problem here is that we have sometimes incompatible classes and we want to make them to work together. So how can we accomplish this? By, um, as I already showed you, by implementing an adapter. So what are the forces? Um, very often, or yeah, very often, the interfaces do not match to the one you need. For example, you're using a library coming from C++ and you want to use it in Python. These, uh, these have completely different yeah, paradigms behind them. And yeah, they could look completely different. But for a Python programmer, if we just translate the method names into Python, uh, it looks ugly. And vice versa. For a C++ programmer, if he has to, to use Python methods for whatever reason, uh, this, the, the naming doesn't work, the object orientation is slightly different, and so on. We want to reuse functionality. So we don't want to just copy the source code from Stack Overflow and um, um, and integrate it into our source code. We want to reuse existing functionality. Um, think of some very yeah, high sophisticated machine learning library, which is implemented by Google, and you want to use it in your source code. You don't want to re-implement the whole machine learning library by yourself. Uh, and the source code may be not available, so you can't change the original source code. This is very often the case when you use external libraries that you cannot change them. Of course, um, if, you have, if you have the source code and you could change the source code, it makes more sense to actually update the old source code. Like I showed you the legacy database. Um, in this case, I have the source code. So it makes much more sense to refactor the old source code instead of uh, developing an, an adapter around it. But sometimes changing old source code, changing legacy source code breaks other libraries and breaks dependent projects. So we cannot do it. And also um, a bad thing, classes can be sealed, so we cannot inherit from them. So in this case, we have to write an object adapter. We cannot write a class adapter. So the solution is, to create an adapter which implements the new interface. And as we have already seen, there are many variants. So either we derive from the original object or we derive from a new object which already implements the new interface. And the third one is that we have to implement uh, all the methods of the new interface ourselves. So the consequences for the class adapter, I already mentioned some of them. So when using um, inheritance, 
we can use override mechanisms. We can use make use of compiler optimizations. For example, we can use the V table. We can use object-oriented mechanisms for, for inheritance. Also, we can access protected members. This is also sometimes very, very uh, convenient. Um, we don't have an additional layer of indirection because we inherited all methods directly. So indirection is just solved via the V table in the background. And sometimes it's solved directly when the compiler inlines the method in the, to the new class. Um, what else? Of course, since we are inheriting, this is a benefit and a drawback at the same time. We inherit all methods automatically. And um, yeah, sometimes this is not wanted, like in the legacy database. Maybe we don't want to, to supply to the client this get critical point method because it it can be lead it can lead to errors. But here I don't have much possible don't have many possibilities to avoid this. Of course, some languages provide mechanisms to hide in inherited methods. But this is not intended by inheritance. So this breaks the Liskov substitution principle. Multiple adapters chained together, it's very difficult to, to change the original class because this breaks all other adapters too. So the object adapter works with all adaptees and all subclasses of the adaptees. So here, this allows Liskov substitution. As long as we have an adaptee, and or or some child's child classes of the adaptee, we can work with that, which is not possible in the class adapter. So here we only can derive from the base adaptee, and we can not derive, or we have to change the source code if we want to derive from subclasses. It's an own tree as a class adapter, and the object adapter is more flexible. Here we can see that composition really is more flexible than inheritance. Also, the object adapter hides all underlying object or underlying details of the adaptee. Here, the, the actual client doesn't know the adaptee at all. So we can change it underneath without the client even noticing. But we have to implement all methods which, uh, which we want or which we need to have for the new interface. So we cannot derive some methods automatically. Like in the first example I showed you, where we derive the get molecular formula and get molecular weight directly from our, our legacy database and only had to implement the new ones. For the object adapter, we really have to implement all the methods of our new interface. And of course, the object adapter actually adds another layer of indirection. So here we have two method calls in between, or one method call in between the original object. 